Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Will with Southern Grails and I'm back here with another video. Uh, today, I'm gonna do my top 25 prestige records. Uh, last video, I did my top 50 blue notes. Love blue note, uh, you know, blue note is top shelf. Um, but right there, right there in the mix uh, is prestige. Um, you know, if Impulse is the house that Train built, Prestige might be the house that Miles Davis built. Uh, a lot of Miles Davis on Prestige. But prestige is a, is a great record. Uh, of course, you know, uh, Rudy Van Gelder uh, is, is on the boards, uh, so the sound is just, is just cheery. Um, prestige sometimes gets a lot of flag because a lot of people consider it as just like a compilation. I mean, that's true. They're, they do, there is a lot of compilations, but there's a lot of original, original stuff on there. Uh, so let's jump right into this, man. I'm gonna show you guys, man. This is my top 25 uh, prestige records. Uh, no particular order for the first ones, but I'm gonna put the, the best ones that I'm that I'm super proud to have uh, uh, right at the end. Uh, so let's jump right in. This one's a compilation. It's Miles Davis. Uh, this is uh, 19, 1959. I mean, the modern jazz giants. You got Milt Jackson, Thelonious Monk, Percy Heath, Kenny Clark. You got Coltrane. You got Garland, uh, which John Coltrane and Red Garland. Uh, those guys did, those guys did a bunch of prestige, and uh, and you'll see, and you'll see uh, uh, a few of these. Coming up next, I'd love to have a Surefire original press, uh, but this is a reissue. It's the 1958 uh, mono. I think uh, 57 uh, was when this originally came out. And you got Sonny Rollins, Thelonious Monk, Horace Silver, Kenny Clark, Percy Heath. A great one to have. This is a really, this is a really clean copy. Like I said, I would love to have a, uh, y'all don't give me shit about touching the X2, this is my fucking record. Uh, coming up next, 1961, steaming with the Miles Davis Quintet. This one's cool, this one's got a, uh, <laughs> you don't see that that often. I might turn it in and see what I get. But yeah, uh, Miles Davis Quintet. And look at that cover too. If he's smoking, he ain't joking. Okay, this one, uh, 1971, a little more, little more in the funk, uh, soul jazz realm. You don't see this one that often. It's Leon Spencer Jr. sneak preview. He's in that cool uh, purple label. But look at this, you got Virgil Jones, Grover Washington. You got Melvin Sparks on the guitar. Uh, Idris Muhammad on the sticks. Funky stuff, man. Really good. Okay, now this guy here, man, I love this guy. Uh, really rare, man. He only put out either four, I think he only put out four or five albums. I think it's five albums and I'm missing one. But that's John Wright. And this is Mr. Soul. This is a 1962 uh, Stereo Press. Man, so good. It, 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 this is so good. The way he plays the piano is just, it, it, it's just, it's just top notch. Okay, here's one that's that's rare, but it's not really. This is the one you can find relatively cheap. Uh, Frank West, Southern Comfort. This is 1962, 1962 press. Um, it's 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 soothing. Um, and it's got a few originals uh, of Frank West on here, but then it's got some it's got some standards too. Ooh, that thing's dirty. That one needs a cleaning. I haven't played this one in a while. That one needs a that one needs a good that one needs a good bath. But it's really good. And like I said, you can find it relatively cheap, you know, 20, 25 bucks. I don't know if you guys can tell my voice sounds different. Down here in the south, man, the, the weed pollen has just been unbelievable. So it's given me, I just came off a really bad, really bad cold. I lost about seven pounds, <laughs> which is a which is a good thing. But it's gotten me a, a kind of a uh, a radio baritone voice so y'all stick with me now this one I found in a hoarder's house in South Carolina if y'all follow me on Instagram a couple of years ago I hit this huge collection I found two Helen Merrill's I just found some incredible jazz records I mean the dude was pretty much just giving them away but it was it was nasty but in this was I found this and had seen this before there's another version that's got an Andy Warhol cover that goes for you know ten million dollars but it's trombone by three. Uh, what year is this? 1956. 1956 press. I mean, you got J.J. Johnson, Kai Winding, Benny Green. You got Kenny Dorm on here, Max Roach, Gary Mulligan, Sonny Rollins. 
Now this record is, a lot of this, all these were recorded in 1949 to 1951. So this is deep into that Charlie Parker, really fast bebop, I mean just playing a million notes, really happy sounding kind of chords. Uh, you know, they didn't really transition into that bluesy type sound. For probably another you know probably another you know six seven eight years from now but it's really good recordings i'd love to have that that andy warhol cover but this is this is a real great one to have okay this one is one i would have liked to put at the end but again it's it's good it deserves to be at the end but i'm gonna show it anyway and that's high pressure uh the red garland quintet now this is uh 1961 1961 i mean these guys these guys together, um, what you had, John Coltrane, you had Donald Byrd, I believe Donald Byrd is on the trumpet. Let's see. Oh, you got Red Garland, John Coltrane, Donald Byrd, George Joyner, and Art Taylor in the sticks. Really good, really good, love it. Okay, this one, uh, this one is a second press. All Morning Long, 1958. Uh, I believe it was originally 1957 with a different with a different cover. Um, but man, Coltrane and Bird, and I think Art Taylor's on the sticks on this one. Yep, Art Taylor and George Joyner on the bass. But dude, those those guys together, man. Prestige put out some good stuff, man. You know, you know. Don't 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 don't. I know it's not slept on, but man. It's not all about Blue Note. Uh, man, prestige is good stuff. This one's a little more rare. Um, this one's 1957. Jammin' with uh, Gene Ammons All-Stars. Look at this lineup. Idris Suleiman, I think I said that Suleiman, I think I said that right. Kenny Burrell, Jackie McLean, Mo Waldron, Paul Chambers, Art Taylor. Woo, a who's who. Uh, it, it sounds good. Kenny Braille plays out of his mind. Um, Kenny Braille plays out of his mind on this one. It's just, it, it's really good. This one's kind of rare. This one, you don't, you don't, you don't see this one uh, that often. I wonder what I'm listening to. That's some good West Coast jazz uh, with Elvin Jones and the Sticks, uh, Jimmy Woods. Yeah, it's blowing. Okay, this one's uh, 1969. Like I said, not a hard one to find. Um, not really that sorry. If you can get one, you can get one pretty cheap. Harold Mayburn breaking and scraping on that cool uh, purple purple label. Yeah, you know you got Blue Mitchell, George Coleman, who Hugh Walker doesn't get a lot of play. You don't see this one often, but it's it's really good. And Blue Mitchell, Blue Mitchell is Blue Mitchell. Okay, uh, this one love this guy, John Wright, 1962 making out. Love it. His piano playing is uh, something to, I always keep these original uh, prestige records. But Eddie Cat-Eye Williams on tenor saxophone, Wendell Marshall on the bass, Roy Brooks on the drums, John Wright, he's got a distinctive sound. Um, it's very, it's very church-like, if, if that makes sense. John Wright, pick up anything you can by him. Okay. The debut by this man, Melvin Sparks. Uh, this is 1971. Melvin Sparks, incredible guitar player, very funky, very boogaloo, uh, bluesy. His picks are really clean, kind of like uh, Kenny Burrell is. It's really good. Anything by Melvin Sparks, pick it up. All right, my guy, the John Wright Trio. Nice and tasty. This is 1960. This one's a tough one. This one's a tough one to find. You don't, you don't, you don't see these that often. Uh, and again, dude's, dude's a beast on the piano. Okay, here's one that's that's kind of rare, but it's really easy to come across. You can get a good good copy for, uh, you know, under a hundred dollars. Uh, 1958 Manteca, the Red Garland Trio. I love that black uh, stereo prestige, uh, prestige label. But you got Ray Beretta on the Congo. And who else we got? You got Paul Chambers and Art Taylor on the drums. Really a nice Latin feel. Good stuff. Okay, we're getting into some really heavy stuff here, man. I'm excited to show these. Um, 
This one's the better one of the of the red garland quintets. One of one of my favorites. Soul Junction. Uh, this is yeah, 19, 1961. Coltrane, Donald Byrd. I mean, geez, the weeks. You know, Art Taylor again, George Joyner on the bass. These guys just make, and their solos go back and forth. Like Donald Byrd will come in with like a three minute solo. Coltrane will come in for like a three minute solo. Rick Garland will just jam for a couple of minutes. It's a really great, uh, really great, really great record for these guys. All right, this one, this is a tough one to find. 1958's Wheelin' and Dealin'. A Who's Who, Coltrane. Mal Waldron, Doug Watkins, Frank West, Art Taylor, Paul Quinichet, Quinichet, Quinichete, Paul Quinichete. Let me know if I if I said that right. Uh, but they did a few different releases of this. I think that same year with different color covers. This is a true first one, and man, it sounds it sounds really good. That's a tough one to find. That's a tough one to find in good clean condition. Now this one here. I wanted to put this one as probably my favorite and most influential on the Prestige. One of them on the Prestige label. Now there's some great ones that I'm missing. You know, I'm missing uh, Saxophone Colossus, which is just the one that's up there. But this is one I'd love to have a first press, but they're really hard to find. It was originally released on, on Moodsville, which is Prestige, but just like a subsidiary. Um, Youssef Latif, Eastern Sounds. Now this one is a 1972 reissue. It sounds amazing. So different, um, soothing, it's hypnotic. Uh, would love to find that true real deal first. If anybody's got one, they'd love to trade. Hit me up, love it. Okay, this man makes his debut for Prestige, 1957. It's Kenny Burrell. I mean, what else can you say? Let's see who's on here. You got Kenny Burrell. You got Tommy Flanagan on the piano. Elvin Jones on the drums. Woo, hoo, hoo, hoo. And Cecil Payne on the baritone sax. Kenny Burrell is a beast. This one's one of my. This one's one of my absolute favorite jazz records in my collection. John Wright, 1960. John Wright Trio, Southside Soul, almost, almost a perfect album, almost a perfect piano uh, jazz album, uh, in my opinion, and a really tough one to find in clean condition. Woo! This is one I got into a bidding war on eBay, but I'm so I'm humbled and I'm proud to have it in my collection. That's a Garland of Red, 1956. Yeah, 1956. His debut for Prestige. Um, you know, with Paul Chambers and Art Taylor, it's simple, it's beautiful, it's just, it's jazz for the years. Now this one, this is a blowing session, um, one of the best on Prestige, 1956, Mobley's Message. With, uh, Hank Mobley blowing, Don Burr, Jackie McLean, and then you got Doug Watkins uh, picking and Art Taylor on the sticks. This is just a beautiful, beautiful, uh, beautiful sounding record. I mean, it, this one is spotless. Love it. Mobley, Mobley did another one called Mobley Second. That's a good one. Love to find that one. Okay, uh, we're getting into the last. These are the last three here, guys. Sonny Rollins, 1956, plus four. This was, I believe, the last record uh, that we had. Um, uh, Richie Powell. Uh, Richie Powell and Clifford Brown on. Uh, they would go on, you, you guys know the story, they would go on to die in a horrible car accident. Uh, Sonny Rollins uh, blows out of his mind. Clifford Jordan is the greatest to ever put his lips on a trumpet. There, I said it. Unbelievable record. I'm really happy to have it. Now, these last two was a tough one for listening experience, but I put the, I put the last one because of the stories. But the next one before it, I've listened to this thing so many times. Taylor's Whalers. This is 1957. I mean, this thing has everybody. And this got a little dust, but it is this is a clean record. With Coltrane, Donald Byrd, Jackie McLean, Rouse, Bryant, Red Garland, Paul Chambers, Wendell Marshall. 
I mean, just a who's absolute who lineup and a really cool cover. Okay, guys, this is the last one. Um, this one, it's it's different uh, for prestige. Uh, if you if you're not into the, if you're really only into the, you know, you know the this really specific jazz, you know, bebop, hard bop, soul jazz. This one's this one's not any of that, and that's Moon Dog. Moon Dog, uh, 1957. He did a couple on Prestige. Uh, this one's this one's probably my favorite because of, because of the cover. But if you don't know the story of Moon Dog, uh, really is this thing called the internet. Check it out. Uh, Moon Dog, an incredible story. You know, he's blinded by accident uh, with a with a with a dynamite accident. Blinded him. You know, he he he. You know, he spent his days on the streets of New York. Uh, he made so many different instruments. And it's a, it's a different sound. It's a different sound, um, but if you have the opportunity to have Moon Dog in your collection, man, 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 don't miss out on this guy. Uh, this documentary out, I think, called "The Viking of," ah, oh, y'all gonna kill me. Viking of Sixth Ave. Is it the Viking of Sixth Ave or Seventh Ave? It might be on the back here. Let's see. New York Street scene. Anyway. It's out there. Moon Dog. Unbelievable. All right, guys. That's the best prestige records I got in my collection. I appreciate y'all hanging with me. Man, that was a struggle. I try not to cough like 30,000 times. All right. Um, my next video, I've been wanting to do this, and I might change my mind. I just watched the new uh, Elvis movie. It was pretty good. It was pretty good. Uh, but, man, there is some vicious people. I mean, just burying Elvis, calling him a, a a cultural thief. What does that even mean? Someone's got to explain that to me. Uh, but I, I'm doing a little research on people that actually toured with him. Um, you know, people that lived with him. It's funny, man. People making comments today. I don't even think your parents were alive, most of you, when this man died. So I'm going to do a little research. And I'm going to find out, was he a cultural thief? And then what the hell does that even mean? But we'll find out. But I, mean, I appreciate you guys. I appreciate all the new subscribers. Uh, and I'll be back. I'll be back in probably a week. And we'll, we'll do that video and see how many subscribers I lose. And see if YouTube blocks me at all. Until then, man, we'll see.